Hello, everybody. All right, and so everybody who's been following me in third and fourth grade lessons, I'm going to start the fifth grade series today. And our first lesson in the fifth grade curriculum is lesson 1.1, Place Value and Patterns. We are on page five of the fifth grade Go Math book. And at the end of our lessons, we should be able to answer this question. How can you describe the relationship between two place value positions? Okay, and so some materials that I'm going to use are base 10 blocks. And in our instructions or information, it says you can use base 10 blocks to understand the relationships among place value positions. So we would use a large cube to represent a thousand. Okay. We would use what is known as a flat to represent hundreds. Okay. We would use a long to represent 10. And we would represent one small cube to represent the value 1. So we should be able to see that it takes 10 times as many of the smaller unit to equal the larger unit. So if we're talking about the small cubes, how many small cubes will it take to equal one long? Well, we should know that that's going to be 10, right? Because a long is, is 10. So and we can find that out by just matching them up, right? We see that they do match. Okay, so 10 times the small cubes would give me one long. So how many longs will it take to equal a flat? Well, there should be 10 flats. Uh, sorry, 10 longs in a flat. And we can see that if we just put the one flat on top of our 10 longs. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And 10 times 10 is 100, right? So 10 longs is 10 times as much as I'm sorry, one flat is 10 times as much as one flat, as one long. Tongue's not working today. So let me try that again. One flat, okay, this is a flat, is 10 times as much as one long. All right. So then how many flats would it take? To equal a cube. A cube is a thousand, and so that would take us ten flats to equal a cube. Three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, one thousand. So the cube is 10 times the amount of a flat. Okay, so let's keep those information pieces of information in mind here as we look through some of this. So look at the long and compare it to a small cube. Okay, the long is how many times as much as the small cube? It's 10, right? We talked about that. So the long is 10 times as much as the small cube. Look at the flat and compare it to the long. How many times bigger is the flat than the long? 10, 10 times. 
look at the large cube and compare it to the flat. The cube is 10 times the cube is 10 times as much as one flat. Okay, now so that's going from a smaller unit to a larger unit. It's going to take 10 of the smaller ones to equal one of the larger place values. So what happens though if we go from the flat, how many of the flats does it take to equal the cube? The flat is 10 times as much. The large cube is 10 times as much as the flat. So if I have one flat, I have one tenth of the large cube. Remember we stacked 10 flats up to equal the height of the cube. Okay, So one tenth of the large cube is one flat. Okay, and how about if we were looking at the long compared to the flat? It would take 10 of the longs to equal one flat, right? So if you only have one of the longs, you would have one tenth of the flat. And if you have one small cube, how much of the long do you have? Well, it takes 10 small cubes to equal one long. So one small cube is one tenth. All right. So let's go ahead and look at our answers. What we've been discussing. Okay. So we said, look at the long and compare it to the small cube. The long is ten times as much as a small cube. The flat is ten times as much as a long. The large cube, a thousand, is ten times as much as the flat, a hundred. The flat is one tenth of a large cube. It takes me 10 flats to equal a large cube. The long is one tenth of the flat because it takes 10 longs or 10 tens to equal a flat or 100. And the small cube is one tenth of the long. It takes 10 small cubes to equal one long or the value 10. All right. So let's go to page six. All right. Describe the pattern you see when you move from a lesser place value to the next greater place value. So it's asking us, what do you notice when you go from one To a 10, to a 100, to a 1,000. What do you notice when you go from 1, 10, hundreds, to a 1,000? They're 10 times greater, right? So, pattern is... The pattern is that the greater place value is 10 times as much as the lesser place value.
Okay. So again, a 10 represented by a long is 10 times as much as the next lesser place value. Okay. So a long, which is 10, is bigger than a one, right? Tens are bigger than ones. And it's take it would be ten times as much as that smaller place value. All right. Look for describe the pattern you see when you move from a greater place value position to the next lesser place value. So if we're going from hundreds to tens, what do we notice about that pattern? This is a hundred, and this is ten. The lesser place value is one tenth of the larger value. All right, the greater place value, the pattern is that the lesser place value is one tenth of the next greater place value. So again, it would take me 10 flats, a uh, 10 longs, which is a set of 10. It would take me 10 sets of 10 to equal one flat or 100. Okay, so if you have one set of 10, you have one set of 100, right? It would take you 10 more, it would take a 10. 10 sets of 10 to equal 100. And if you have only one 10, you have one tenth of it. All right. Now, let's look at the table and make connections. We can use our understanding of place value patterns and a place value chart to write numbers that are 10 times as much or one tenth of any given number. So, looking here, we see three hundreds, no tens, zero ones. What would be ten times as much? Well, what would be ten times as much as a hundred? It would be a thousand. Because we're going from hundreds to the next greater place value. So, we're going from hundreds to thousands. So, what would happen to my three hundred? It just become 3,000. Now, if we were going from hundreds to tens, so if it wasn't 300 and we had just 100 here and we went to the tens value, there would be 10. Okay, so 10 times 3 would be 30. So in this case, what is 10 times as much as 300? What is... 10 times as much as 300. Well, we're, that would be going one place value to the left. So it would be 3,000. What would happen if you went to the right and you went from larger to smaller? Well, in that case, it would be 30. 30 is one tenth of 300. So we can look at this to figure out what the next one would be. What would be one-tenth of 30? One-tenth of 30 would be 3. What would be 10 times as much as 3,000? 
Well, that would just be 30,000. How much would be 10 times as much as 10,000? That would be 300,000. So what do we notice also about this pattern then? When I go from smaller place value to the next larger place value, I add a 10 or a zero, right? And I went from tens to hundreds. The only difference is there's a zero added. Then we went to the thousands. And now we have three zeros compared to two zeros. We go to ten thousands, there's four zeros compared to the smaller place value of three zeros. And finally, hundred thousands, we added one, another zero from the ten thousands and to give us 300,000. So write the given number in a place value chart. So I, I've created my own little place value chart. I have ones, tens, hundreds, one thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. And my first number is 10. And it wants me to do 10 times as much. So I'm going to go one place value to the left. So 10 sets of 10s would be a hundred. What would be one tenth? One tenth of ten. That would be one. Okay, so when we go to the right, we actually lose a zero. When we go to the left, to the next greater place value, we added a zero. So let's take that pattern, 70. Okay. So again, we have 70. If we add 10, so we're doing 10 times as much, we would have 700. If we had one-tenth of 70, one-tenth of 70 is 7. So again, we notice that when I went to 10 times greater, I wind up adding a zero. And one tenth, I actually lost the zero. So you might remember that we can write seven. 70 as seven tens. Well, <clears throat> if you take one tenth of that, how many do we have? We only have seven. If we have 700, I'm sorry, if we have 70 and we make it 10 times greater, it would be basically saying 10 times 10, seven times. Okay, so 9,000. If we go to the place value to the left, so we have 9,000, um, remember that these are the I'm not saying that I have 9,000 one thousands, okay? I'm just saying that's my total, okay, 9,000. I could write it out as 9,000. Zero, zero, zero. I'm just going with the total, okay? So 9,000, and I'm going to make it 10 times greater. I'm going one place value to the left, so just add a zero, 90,000. If I take one tenth, of 9,000, I'm going to lose a zero. So one tenth of 9,000 9, is 900. 10 times 9,000 is 90,000.
All right. Now, 500 is 10 times as much as what? 500 is 10 times as much as what? That means what is the value to the right of 500? Because this is 10 times as much as this place value. So that would be 50. Number two, 20,000 is one tenth of what? 20,000 20, is one tenth of what? So remember, to take one tenth of something, that means we went to the right. And so one tenth of 200,000 is 20,000. I wrote that in the wrong place, by the guys. Okay, so we're looking at if 20,000 is one tenth of what? If I had 10 more 20,000s, or a total of 10 20,000s, I would have 200,000. 20,000 is one tenth of 200,000. 900 is one tenth of what? Again, we've actually already done this one. So 900 is one tenth of what? So remember, when we take one tenth of something, that means we went from a larger place value to a smaller place value. So it would be nine thousand. So one tenth of nine thousand is nine hundred. Six hundred is ten times as much as what? Six hundred. Is 10 times as much as what? Okay, so this 600 means it was it's 10 times bigger than the smaller place value. So that would be 60. So it's 10 times as much as 60. All right, let's continue. Complete the sentence with 100 or a thousand. So 200 is how many times as much as two? Okay, right, so let's let's start here. So if we start at two, okay, and we increased it by 10 times, that would be 20, right? But it says, I'm sorry, number five. I, I skipped number five. Okay. I'll come back to 13. Sorry, guys. Number 10. All right. Number five. If we have number 10 and we want 10 times as much as 10. So we're going from 10 to the next larger place value on the left. So we recognize the pattern and we just would add one zero. If we took one tenth of 10, we'd be going from the tens place value to the right one, which would be the ones place. 3,000. We'd be going from thousands place to the ten thousands. So that's, we would just have to add a zero. 10 three thousands would be 30,000. One tenth of 3,000 would be 300. So again, 
Let's look at this pattern. 10 times as much as 10. What do we notice? All I had to do was add a zero when we're writing 10 times as much. When we're writing 10 times as much as 3,000, it became 30,000. All we added was a zero. But when we took one tenth of 10, we actually, in a sense, lost a zero. Okay. Here I started with 10. One tenth of it is just one. One tenth of 3,000, again, we, our answer, we take away zero, it gives us 300. So what would be 10 times as much as 800? Well, 10 times as much as 100 is 1,000, right? So we'd be going from 800 to 8,000. If we take one tenth of 800, we'd be going from the hundreds place one place to the right, which would be the tens. And so one tenth of 800 is 80. 10 times as much as 50. Okay, that's basically what we're saying, right? Something that's 10 times as much as the previous value is we're going to add a zero. If we're going to take one tenth of that number, it's it's going to lose its zero because it's going to 10 times smaller. All right, so what's one tenth of 50? All right. So keep going here. If when I go 10 times as much, I know that all I really have to do is add a zero. I'm going from hundreds to thousands. One tenth of 400, I'm going from the hundreds to the tens, so 40. 10 times as much as 90 would be 900. We're going from the tens to the next place value hundreds. When I go from 90 and I take one tenth of it, I'm going from the tens to the ones. 6,000, 10 times. I'm going from thousands to ten thousands. If I take one tenth of six thousand, I'm going from the thousands to the right one place value, so I'm going to wind up in the hundreds. Two hundred. I start in the hundreds, I go to the next place value to the left, which would be ten times greater, and that would be thousands. If I take one tenth of 200, I'm going from the hundreds, one place value to the right, which is the tens, and I would have 20. One tenth of 200 is 20. So, now, back to what I was trying to, or going to start to discuss here with 200 is, how many times as much as 2? Well, if I've started at 2, I'm in the one place, right? If I take 10 times as much, I'll go from the ones to the tens. If I take 10 times as much again, I would be at 200. How many times have I increased tens? 10 times 10 is 100. So 200 is 100 times as much as 2. Okay, 14. 4,000 is how many times as much as 4? Okay, same idea. So we start at 4. If I just did 10 times as much, I'd be at 40. If I did another 10, which would be 100 times greater than 4, I'd be at 400. If I do another 10 times as great, I'd be at 4,000. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 times 10 is 1,000. So... 4,000 is a thousand times greater than 4. Okay. 
So what about if we're at 700? Okay, well, let's, let's check that out. So we're at 700, and we're going to go, how much is 70,000? So 700 to 7,000 to 70,000 to 700,000. So we increase 10 times each time we go, right? So 10, 100, 1,000. And 600 is how many times as much as 6? Six? 6, 60, 600. 100. All right, 17. Explain how you can use place value pattern to describe how 50 and 5,000 compare. How can you use place value patterns to describe how 50 and 5,000 compare? All right, well, let's look at the zeros, right? 50 has one zero. 5,000 has three zeros. How many more zeros is that? 5,000 has two more zeros than 50. So two zeros added to, two, uh, sorry, two zeros in the 5,000 means that it's two place values greater than 50. Well, two place values greater would be 100. 10 times, and then another 10 times, so 100. So we can say that since 5,000 since 5,000 has two more zeros Since 5,000 has two more zeros than 50, 5,000 is 100 times as much as 50. And so we can show that too. We can work that out. So we go from 50. And we're going to go 10 times greater, that would be 500. And if we go 10 times greater than 500, we'd be at 5,000. So how many place values did we move from 50 to 1,000? Two place values. Each place value is 10 times greater than the previous one. So 10 times 10 is 100 times. All right, so let's use reasoning. 30,000 is how many times as much as 30? Well, how many more zeros are there in 30,000 than 300? 30 has one zero. Thirty thousand has four zeros. So it has three more zeros. So it went to the left three times, right? I have to go 30. My next one would be 300. Then 3,000. Then 30,000. And each jump, each movement to the left is 10 times greater. So 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times. So 30,000 is 1,000 times as much as 30. So blank is 10, 10 times as much as 3,000.
10 times as much, that would be 30,000. Let's look at that. So if we're at 3,000 and we're just going 10 times greater, we'd be at 30,000. So 30,000 is 10 times as much as 3,000. All right, page eight, number 19. Mark and Robin use base 10 blocks to show that 200 is 100 times as much as two. Well, that's true, right? 100 times two is 200. Whose model makes sense? Whose model is nonsense? Explain your reasoning. All right. <clears throat> I think you would agree that two flats, uh, two longs shows 20. Two small cubes shows two. Well, they're saying it's a hundred times as much as two. A hundred times as much as two. If I take a hundred times as much as the 20, that wouldn't be 200, right? Because if I'm at 20, to increase 10 times, that would be 200. So that's only 10 times. But Mark doesn't make sense. Marks is nonsense. His model shows twenty, not two. So his model shows two hundred is ten times. as much as 20. In Robbins, if she's starting at 2, if she takes 10 times as much, she'd be at 20. Then if she took 10 times as much as the 20, she'd be at 200. So how many place values did she go to go from 1 to 200. She went two place values, so 100. Okay, so hers makes sense. Okay, so again, remember, these are the models that they're putting out. Mark put out two sets of 10, and he's saying that that shows that 100 times the two sets of 10 is 200. It's not. He's only showing 10 times, because 20 times 10 is 200. And in this case, it would take 100 twos to equal 200. All right, now number 20. Explain how you would help Mark understand why he should have used small cubes instead of longs. Well, okay, so let's see.
the longs he used are ten times greater than the small cubes. Okay. And if 10 times 10 equals 100, then 20 times 10 equals 100, it equals 200. Okay. So he's not multiplying his 20 by 100, he's multiplying it only 10 times as much. All right, so let's try to look at that explanation. The longs he used are 10 times greater than a small cube. Okay, so this long that he's using is 10 times greater than the one Robin's using. Okay, so if we know that 10 times 10 is 100, then it reasons that 20 times 10 is 200. So he's not showing that a hundred times greater than 20 is 200. He's only showing 10 times. He's not multiplying by a hundred. So in order to multiply by a hundred, he needs to use two small cubes to equal 200. All right, 21. Choose true or false for each sentence. 600 is one-tenth of 6,000. So if we're at 6,000, and we move one place value to the right, we'd be at 600. So one-tenth of 6,000 is 600. That's true. 67 is one-tenth of 6,700. Okay, so one-tenth means one place value to the right. So one-tenth of 6,700 is 670. So no, 67 would be 1 100th of 6,700, so false. And 1,400 is 10 times as much as 140. So if we're at 140 and we go 10 times as much, we go from hundreds to thousands. So 1,400, yes, that's true. All right, so that's it for lesson 1.1. In our next lesson, we will be working with um, place value of whole numbers. So, until our next session, I will see you soon.